Welcome guys to Dyson Sphere Program. Uh, this is a game I've been super excited to share with you guys. I played through a little bit of it before, but I put it down specifically because I wanted to share it with you guys. A quick note before we really dive into this game. Um, I've already done one take of this episode and I found a couple of problems. Namely being, I have a cherry blue MX keyboard, which means that it is quite loud and this wonderful echo machine behind me really likes to make sure that my microphone catches it. So I'm gonna do my best to separate the talking from the doing so that I can mute myself. Um, yeah, kinda gonna be a pain. It's also going to prevent me from actually streaming until I get that fixed. But yeah, that's where I'm at right now. So without further ado, let's jump into Dyson Sphere program. So if the title and the title scene didn't give it away, the premise of this game is to build a Dyson Sphere. And if you don't know what a Dyson Sphere is, imagine taking a whole bunch of solar panels and literally just encapsulating the sun in them so you can harness all of its radiant energy. And that's a lot of energy. And it's also a lot of solar panels. This isn't like a Minecraft game where we're just gonna go knock down a tree, get some sticks, and put them into solar panels and hang them up in the sky. Like, the whole premise of this game is to build factories. So you might have one factory that actually extracts a whole bunch of resources and ships it to another factory which might process them into some intermediate materials and another one that actually like makes what you're after which might be parts to the Dyson Sphere but might also just be parts to help you research and do more stuff. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the goal, and I can't wait to show you the scale and magnitude of this game, as well as just how graphically wonderful it is. Um, so yeah, let's jump right in. I'm going to start by creating a new game, and really the only things we have to play with are number of stars and resource multiplier. The resource multiplier dictates like how many resources there are, which roughly correlates to how fast you can grow. Doesn't really have much of a bearing on difficulty per se, but yeah. Yeah, number of stars we're gonna leave all the way at 64 and I'd like to give you guys a true experience so we're gonna leave the resource multiplier at one times as well and I'm just gonna shuffle through these until we find something of interest that one's kind of nice and webbed out I like how like spread out that one is see it, sometimes it generates these islands and I'd actually really like to get one that's got a whole bunch of those islands and it's just like pretty out there. That one's not bad. I think we can do better. Ooh, I kind of like the shape of that one. So I think this is the one that we're actually going to run with. So I'm going to hit start game. I love this intro sequence, so I'm just gonna shut up for a second and let you guys take this in. Welcome to the actual universe. You may find it's different from our homeland, should you be able to adapt to the laws of physics in a short time. I am your advisor, and will help you through this mission. Everything here is yours. As one of Cosmo and the pioneer of the Dyson Sphere program, you will explore this cluster step by step. By using the resources here to construct the Dyson Sphere to provide energy for the center brain to maintain homeland, starting from scratch. I have chosen a designated planet for you to start the mission, which has necessary resources for initial development. Now please drive the space capsule to the planet. All right. Don't mind if I do. I'm gonna aim for that nice... Yeah, let's aim for this island off to the side over here. Actually... Let's aim for something... Now you are about middle. to reach the designated planet. Beautiful, uh angle of that planet right there. 
Oh, okay, I forgot we don't get to pick where we're actually gonna go. That's fine. I'm sure the game picked somewhere decent for us. This is Icarus, a lightweight industrial mecha with powerful functionality. You can use the arrow keys or right-click on the destination to control its movement. In this mission, you will manipulate Icarus to travel beyond the stars and create miracles. All right, so yeah, that is the premise, quite literally. I'm gonna start by deconstructing that guy. Right-click on it to recycle. I'm gonna grab some the of these flora as well. Places, such as trees, gravel, etc. In the meantime, hold down shift and right click to give a series of commands. You receive several items after recycling the space capsule. Click the inventory button in the lower right corner of the screen to open the cabin to view them. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna figure out how to turn these tutorials off just a little bit because they are a little bit unnecessary. I would also like to turn him off. He gets quite chatty here in the beginning, but he also provides some backstory to the game that I figured you guys would enjoy, so we'll leave him for the you time being. down mouse middle button drag to rotate the angle. Angle of view, or slide the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Okay, so hopping down here to our inventory, we can see we have a little bit of iron, a little bit of copper, some magnets. I harvested these plants. We're gonna need those for fuel in a little bit. You see we've got this energy bar down here that we have to maintain. And they did give us some hydrogen fuel rods. I'd like to save those. They're pretty valuable and we don't get them until, you know, a little bit later, but yeah. And just to give you guys a sense of the scale of this game, Obviously, like... Yet you have not unlocked the construction menu, which will be done automatically when complete any... Actually, forget him. Room. Basically, this is our dude right here, which, by the way, we are an absolute unit of a mech. This is awesome. Love that guy. We can hit this button to actually look at, like, the current star system that we're in, which, by the way, is named Corone Australis, so I'm pretty sure we are in the outback of space. Um... And if we continue to zoom out, those are all the different star clusters that we generated a second ago, which is incredible. Just to like zoom in on those, find us, find the planet that we're on, hit a button, and yeah. So let's take a look at the technology tree really quick. Um, this is what's in the game and currently, this is gonna be our next step, is we need a way to generate power and harvest resources. That's what the mining machine does, and that's what these wind turbines do. Um, so in order to do that, we're gonna to have to have these magnetic coils, and we can hit that button to actually activate it. Now, we have to provide these resources to actually perform research. And the good news is that we can fabricate them ourselves. So in this case, we only need 10 electromagnets. Electromagnets require magnets and copper, which the game was so kind to actually start us with. We need 10, every unit makes two. I'll just make five. And there we go. That should be everything that we need. Nice, and there we are. Right according to plan. So, yeah, ultimately, we are going to need this copper over here and this iron over there. created a mining machine to achieve ore collecting automation. Yes, that is quite literally the point. So I'm going to throw one down over here by the iron, and I would like to like hit all of these veins. So if you notice, where the uh, mining machine is currently placed, it'll grab 48,000 iron, and the number of nodes that it covers not only dictates how much iron it has access to, but also how quickly it will get that. So since we're covering six nodes, we would get iron twice as fast as if we only covered three nodes. So that's nice. I'm gonna throw him down right there. He needs power though, and in order to power him, we're gonna One need a bit of a grid. Is not powered. You need to keep it within the power coverage area 
and supply it with power facilities in order to maintain its normal works. So, in order to make power stuff happen, we're gonna need some wind turbines. Looking at these dudes, they consume 420 kilowatts each. Nice. Um, but we're gonna have two of them, so that's actually gonna be 840. Wind turbines put out 300 kilowatts each, so we're gonna need three wind turbines to actually power the two of these guys that we need. We're also gonna need resources to actually build another one. So it looks like we need probably iron, well, both iron and copper. So I'm just going to hop over here and mine a little bit of copper, and then we'll go over there, mine some iron by hand, until we actually got enough to build those. So I'll catch you guys in a second. Beautiful, okay, so we're back now. We have our three wind turbines, which is how we're gonna generate power, two Tesla towers, which is how we're actually going to transfer that power, and we have our other mining machines. So let's go throw this dude down first, just so that we like know exactly where we're gonna be. Let's see here, it's gonna go right there. So let me harvest these plants because we need the fuel. Okay. Once again, the goal is to cover all of the actual like nodes. That looks good right there. So yeah, we've got copper and we have iron. I'm gonna throw wind turbines down the middle. Early game, I typically like to place these dudes down and try to use them to actually like bridge the power grid everywhere it needs to go that way as i get bigger i'm naturally producing more electricity um you'll see how that guys you'll see how that plays out in just a second established your first yeah so like Mr. Talkative up there said, you can actually click on this and see how much of the power we are producing or how much we are actually consuming. So in this case, we're doing plenty fine because both of these guys actually filled up with ore pretty quickly. So that's good. We have a source of iron ore and a source of copper ore, but that's gonna be a little tedious to constantly be having to turn that thing against ourselves. So typically what I like to do is come over here and I'm gonna grab the automated smelter and I'm gonna grab the basic logistics system. Again, this uses the exact same thing we did over here. So I'm just gonna fast forward through this cause I'm gonna grab some materials and I'll catch you guys once we have both of those unlocked. Hey, there is the automated smelter. Hit the mecha panel button at the bottom right of the screen to open the mecha panel and resupply fuel. And there is the basic logistics system. You have received the sorter and the conveyor belt. Yes, I have. Okay, so the plan is to basically take the ores from the mining machine, throw them into the smelter, and then from the smelter we can put them back into storage so that we can actually let them stack up a little bit. Now, the way I'm envisioning this base growing, we've got, uh, we've got this oil thing here that I would rather, I don't know, hopefully be able to take advantage of later, but I usually like to find a cluster of them. What is its output? 2.24 a second. That's actually not bad. Okay, so this is gonna bother just my general sense of organization, but actually, yeah, we could do it this way. We'll have the iron and copper both kind of flow in and down this way. And usually what I'll do in games like this, like games like Factorio or this or uh, a couple of the other factory-based games that I've made, is I have this rule of thumb where it's like, yeah, materials kind of flow one way so we might have the iron flow this way 
And then once we turn it into plates, we'll flow it back. And that way we can just keep tacking on smelters to the end of it and it works great. So, let's do that really quick. Okay, so here is our little iron factory. We have this dude pumps out ore, the smelter takes the ore, converts it to ingots, the ingots get thrown over here in this here storage chest, and I'm gonna limit that to two stacks so that once we've got two stacks, which is about 200 iron sitting here, it's probably good, probably don't need any more. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing over here for copper, so I'll be back in just a second. So with that done, we now have copper set up as well. We've got this nice little symmetrical factory going. That's probably not gonna last too long, spoiler alert, but hey, we got it. So I think the last thing that I really wanna do in this episode with you guys is um, I wanna set up a factory to make these conveyor belts because even in just setting these up, I had to spend a good bit of time crafting conveyor belts. That's probably like the most common thing that I do. So yeah, all we gotta do is come down to the tech tree. Now we have this basic assembly. What this does is this obviously gives us the assembler and the assembler is capable of taking items in and performing the operations of a single recipe. Now it's important to note that like over here, Whenever I go to build something, like say the conveyor belt, it says, oh, you need gears and iron. And it might look at my inventory and go, oh cool, you've got iron ingots, so I can turn those into plates, and I can take some of the plates and turn them into gears, and then make more plates and turn both of those into the conveyor belts, which is great, but the assemblers are not that smart. So we're actually gonna need two of them, one to take some of the plates and turn them into gears, and then another one to take the remaining plates and gears and turn them into the conveyor belts themselves. So, yeah, but before we can even do that, I'm gonna research this tech, so I'll be back in just a second. There we go, the assembler. So, uh, I'm gonna immediately have to spend some time Crafting more of those dudes and a handful of these dudes as well. So I'll catch you guys in a couple seconds when that runs out. Okay, so we've got those now. Let's figure out where we want this to go. I think for the time being, I'm just going to put it down here. Usually I like to branch out more because again, like... I was going to say, because again, we have like an entire planet at our disposal, so we might as well take advantage of it, but I don't actually have the factory for conveyor belts yet, so it's kind of hard to get anywhere. Okay, so we need another one of those guys, and in the meantime, let's see here, and the good news is conveyor belts only actually take iron. So I'm planning on branching this conveyor belt off and we'll run them down a little bit. Basically like this. And I'm actually gonna take this iron and produce a few more wind turbines because we'll obviously need those to come down here. I'm also getting low on fuel. So while they're doing that, I'm gonna come harvest a couple of these trees. And I will throw the biomass in the fuel chamber. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna throw one assembler right there, and the other dude will go here, which means we're gonna need to extend the conveyor belt just a little bit, and that means that I'm gonna have to generate a few more. 
you guys can see why we really need to get this factory going. But while those are crafting, we can extend our power grid down here a little bit. And again, by using the wind turbines as basically our power rails, the bigger we get, the more power we generate, which works early game. So we need that, and then I'm going to make a couple more of these guys. Um, I'm thinking two should be fine. Honestly, one would probably work just as well. But I'm going to... Let's see here. How do I want to run this guy? Maybe we'll just run him down like that. And then I can grab a storage chest. And we'll throw a chest at the end. Now, while we're letting them build that, we're going to need an assembler that produces gears. And then this guy is actually going to be the one to build the conveyor belt because the conveyor belt takes gears and iron. So we can use the sorters to actually put the iron into that guy and that guy. And then we'll use sorters again to bridge the gap between the two. Like that. And finally down here, I'll have our storage chest. We're gonna have to have an output and an input to the chest. And yeah, we should be good to go. Again, I'm gonna limit this chest to two stacks, which in this case is 400 conveyor belts, but we do go through conveyor belts pretty rapidly, so. That's not going to be too much of a concern. Throw the Tesla tower down there. Now, here's the other thing is that these will only fire up once that chest is full. And it just so happens the game gives us three smelters off the get-go. So I'm going to drop another one down, craft another couple of those guys, extend our conveyor belts just a little bit, and we'll be producing twice as much iron as we were before, which is perfect because we need it. Throw those down. Cool. I'm gonna wait for this chest to fill up and I will catch you guys once it does. Oh, it looks like it just did. Actually, it did not. These are coming by so quickly that it can only grab every other one, which is actually pretty convenient. That's like an accidental priority system kind of thing. So now, we can see that this dude is filling up with iron to make gears. And as soon as he's full, this guy can start picking up the iron and actually start making conveyor belts. And our biggest concern right here is that he doesn't actually have enough power to properly operate most of the time. So... Let's figure out if we can't solve that problem. Well, okay, so we are... We're gonna need a couple more wind turbines. We've got five. We really just need two more because we're dipping down about three quarters. So I'm gonna make another one. There's that. I'm gonna grab these trees that are sitting right here. And as usual, I'm going to drop the fuel in the chamber so we can actually continue to do cool things. And we're gonna run down here. And yay, power grid is fixed again. Everything's good to go. This dude is building things just about as fast as he possibly can and they are stacking up there. We now have a conveyor belt factory, which is pretty cool. So that's the start of the game. From here, we're going to research the electromagnetic matrix, which is how you actually get into most of the technology tree. Like all of the rest of this stuff from here on out uses matrices for crafting. And like down here, as we go on, they start to take several different types of matrices. There's one that takes three, like, it gets pretty interesting and they're all in different ratios so how you optimize your factory is kind of up to you but i think that's where we're going to leave it for this episode 
Um, next episode, we'll focus mostly on actually building those matrices and amping up our research. But for the time being, we have the start of a factory that we can use to make our factories, um, which I find to be pretty exciting. So I'm looking forward to the next episode. I will catch you guys there. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it too. As always, leave your comments down in the comments section. Feel free to like if you liked this video and subscribe if you want to see more. I will catch you guys later. Have a good one.